I'm Mary Beth, Paddle Adventure. And today, we're gonna be talking about packing up your inflatable paddleboard. Let's do it. Before packing up your paddleboard, ensure that it's clean and dry. Check out my video on how to clean your paddleboard. We wanna remove the fins if possible, as well as the leash. You can leave your leash attached. Just make sure it's outside away from the board when you're rolling or folding it. Otherwise, if the leash is stuck on the inside and it's attached to your board, the coil will indent your deck pad. The next step is to remove as much air out of your inflatable paddleboard as possible. You can do this a few ways. The fully manual way, releasing the valve and slowly squeezing and pushing air out of the paddleboard, or some manual pumps have a deflation valve that you can attach your hose to, or two-stage electrical pumps have a deflate valve. And if you're interested on electrical pumps, check out my video. Releasing the air valve on a fully inflated paddleboard can be extremely loud. Don't worry, this is normal. Let's do it. Keep your valve down and open in order to push out as much air out of the board as possible if you aren't using a manual or electrical pump to help you eliminate the air. Most paddleboard valves are at the tail of the board. Start at the nose and lightly roll the air out of the board. I just feel like the little mermaid. <laughs> Once you've removed as much air as possible, place the valve pin in the upright position and seal the valve. This way, next time when you go to inflate the paddleboard, it's ready to go and you don't make that horrible mistake of pumping your board, removing the pump hose, and then hearing a whoosh, so then have to pump it again. Now that we have all of the air out of the paddleboard, you wanna unroll it so it's totally laying flat. As you can see, I have a tarp laying down. This way, it helps keep your board free of any debris and as clean as possible. Rolling or folding your board. It's a bit of a debate on which one is the best for your inflatable paddleboard. We'll do both today, but I think they each have their pros and cons. So test out which one works best for you and your board. The important thing is to avoid any tight creases or folds in the PVC of your board to avoid any wear and tear and damage. Let's start off with rolling your paddleboard. Place your pump, whether it's manual or electrical, at the nose of your board and start to roll around the pump. I like to have a towel or cloth with me when I'm rolling. That way, if there's any extra moisture or debris, I can easily wipe it off. Rolling with your pump in the middle also helps create an even roll to avoid it being too tight of a roll and creating creases that will damage your board. The end of the roll is always the trickiest because you have your fins or a fin box and it's hard to time it perfectly. So if you can see, we ended it with a pressure point where the fin box is, which is not good. You wanna make sure that your fin boxes are flat and pressure free. You don't wanna be straining them on the edges. A tip to avoid this is unroll your board just enough you can fold the tail of your board back into the roll so your fin boxes are laying flat. From there, you'll continue the roll. There you have a nice roll with the pump inside protected in the board, fin boxes protected on the back, and no major creases. The other benefit of tucking in the tail to protect your fin boxes is that there's no fin boxes that are pricking out at the back. And this is really important if you're transporting your paddleboard bag on top of your back and you're not getting stabbed in the back. Before putting the board in the bag, make sure you put your paddle in the back first. Now, before you fully zip up the paddleboard bag, there is lots of space in and around the paddleboard, especially at the bottom or the top of the roll, where you can store things like your PFD, your rash guard, your leash. This paddleboard bag actually has a spot in the back to store your fins. And there you have how to pack up your paddleboard in a roll. Let's take it out of the bag and I'm gonna show you what it's like to fold the paddleboard. 
All right, so the same steps that we took leading up before we started to roll, cleaning, drying, and removing any fins, any attachments, as well as getting out as much air as possible, whether that's manually or assisted with a pump. From there, the fold starts at the tail or back of the board. Same as the roll, you want to ensure that the fin boxes are flat. Tuck in this little section here, creating a nice flat space and this is going to be our folding size. The benefit to the fold from the tail is that you're starting with the length of the fin box and sticking to that throughout versus rolling and hoping to land evenly and flat with that fin box at the end. A few downfalls in my opinion is that you can't store your pump on the inside and your fin boxes are sitting against your deck pad creating an indent in your deck pad. And there you have the fold. Similar to rolling the board, folding it, you can see that there's no vulnerable spots that are folded and tightly creased. Let's put it in the board bag. Again, paddle is already in there. I wouldn't say it's easier or harder getting a folded board into the bag, but the downfall is that the pump isn't in the bag. There is a little bit more room, but it's awkward and the pump's not able to fit in there easily. My preference is to roll the paddleboard and tuck in the tail with the fin box at the end. That way you're saving space, putting your pump in with your paddleboard, you're protecting the pump and keeping your fin box nice and safe. That's a wrap on packing up your inflatable paddleboard. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tips, reviews, and adventures. Until next time, happy adventuring.